Lack of information. I have looked at trucking as a powerful industry. Knowledge is power. Older drivers, seasoned drivers, don't talk to newer drivers coming in, see them getting new equipment, new jobs, things that they're not getting because of things that were implemented in the past, clearing house, SAP, uh, even all the way back to ELDs and how they're trying to put them on 2000 and newer, or excuse me, older engines. Um, What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. What could I say? I knew if I gave the wrong answer, I mean, Nikki, Ginger, Ace, all of them could have wound up getting killed. Because there's one thing about these old timers. They don't like any fucking around with the other guy's wives. It's bad for business. So I lied. Even though I knew that by lying to Gaji, I could wind up getting killed too. No. I ain't seen anything like that. Are you sure? I'm positive. Hey, sorry, I've been playing phone tag with you all morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's cool. It's it's cool. It's it's it's, it's understandable. You know, you got things to do. I understand. You calling me uh from Indiana, so no more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Nicole in the building. Hey, yo. Man, I'm really getting put on the spot. Hey, hey yo. How, how, how's it going out there? It's going good. It's going good. All right. Well, I appreciate you uh, stopping by, having a seat, and chopping it up with the lockout men. Uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself. What, what's your background like? Uh, my background, as you found me on TikTok, is a little interesting. Um, I work in, in trucking. I'm a recruiter, but uh, I actually have a past of addiction. I have a past of a lot of odd jobs. I have a lot of back and forth. Um, straightened my life out when I started working at a trucking company, actually, with some really great men. It was a small company that was real illegal. I uh, watched a lot of really great careers get ruined, and I didn't want to see it keep happening. And I kept moving forward with that, and all the way to I'm trying to get my CDL now. Okay, uh, okay. Trying to educate everybody in the process. Okay, so you start a uh, so you started in a trucking company as a uh, as what a recruiter, right? Like, what? How did you safety? Uh, safety. Ooh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, how did you? Well, let me ask you this. Why Why you want to manifest from working internal? Because, um, I mean, you know, I, you get a grasp of what's, what's trucking is like to now coming out here to get your CDL and, and driving the truck. What, what's the lore to that? Lack of information. I have looked at that trucking as a powerful industry. Knowledge is power. Older drivers, seasoned drivers don't talk to newer drivers coming in, see them getting new equipment, new jobs, things that they're not getting because of things that were implemented in the past, clearing house, SAP, uh, even all the way back to ELDs and how they're trying to put them on 2000 and newer, or excuse me, older engines. Um, information i had to learn when i got thrown into recruiting i knew illegal over the road driving that was it and i realized that i was able to talk to these drivers that had 10 years experience and i knew two months of safety but it was the people who taught me i was taught by drivers and it i was confused at first because i didn't understand why when i was in pennsylvania and they shut the state down because of a snowstorm they still had drivers on the road and i asked and they said they're probably just green, lack of information. So when I got out there and started putting my hands on a truck, I went to Massachusetts, did an OTR account with a friend of mine, a OTR team account with Arizona. Back, I had never left Indiana. Um, I realized that you have to do it if you want to be in the industry. Recruiters should not be on the phone recruiting and trying to sell, quote unquote, a job or pitch a job if they don't know what they're, what they're talking about. Mm, it's, good it point. ain't right. Good point. I mean, some some of the drivers that I had talked to, um, of course, they feel that recruiters do nothing but lie, cheat, and steal to try to get you in the uh, driver's seat. One driver that I and my hand is in the air in agreement. Mm -hmm. One oh, sorry. One, one driver I talked to, he says uh, that a recruiter should actually be uh, in the driver's seat. 
like actually had some time driving and understanding what us truckers actually go through so that you can properly sell the company because you because of the knowledge that you gain from it. So yeah, you Agreed. you you is I mean you wow. <laughs> All right. So what's uh Nicole, what's 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 going on? Um again I came across your TikTok and um in that particular video you you struck out twice what's what what's happening three times i um so requirements for recruiting are usually three to five years if you've ever gotten into trouble such as a dui a careless a reckless anything like that um back in, i lost a friend uh back in the past and i didn't handle it well i got an, i got a dui um, I have waited five years or three years, excuse me. I have to wait five years. Um, I've been turned down by four trucking schools already because of it. And as of February, you have to be, um, cleared by the FMCSA to go to school in order to get your license. You can't get it grandfathered in or with a trainer anymore. Right. Um, so I know I screwed up and I understand that. But as you asked me right away, you know, what's your past? Well, most people in this industry changed their lives to get into it, mm -hmm. including myself. And if I got to wait longer and keep pushing through, then that's fine. But it's, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, I've recruited for probably 40, 40 companies across the country, major carriers. And I don't talk about who I recruit for, you know, it's social media, but I don't fit the requirements. I don't. That sucks. <laughs> A lot of people don't. Uh, turning people down every day is hard. Wow. I mean, for, you, you say you try your hand at four, like, independent trucking schools, or is these are trucking schools connected to trucking companies? Both. Okay, now I could probably understand the trucking company sponsor school, but independent school? I mean, I I thought would you know, being that you're paying out of the pocket, I I thought they would, I thought they would at least give you a chance, especially considering that you, you know, your your background really don't come into play until you actually apply for the trucking job. How are you being uh, denied uh, access to the trucking schools? I can't give an accurate answer. My only guess can be that they still have you driving those trucks on the road at certain points. You're still needing to be insured. Insurance is what coming from the safety side. I, I, when, when safety will yell at drivers for CSA scores, that's insurance costs. That's an accumulative average of numbers across a blanketed amount of drivers and trucks. So accidents, SAP, uh, you know, anything that may raise or a heightened insurance rate, such as CSA scores. Um, so that's the only thing that I can think of is that it's just going to throw a higher insurance rate until I'm in the clear. Cause even car insurance for me costs $586 for liability on one vehicle. I had to sell my vehicle this year. Well, wait, I, wait a minute, Nicole, you, Said this the, the the DUI happened to you what five years ago? I had one in seventeen, and I had a chemical failure in two thousand and nineteen before I got sober. Oh, so five years and three years. Okay, so they using they using that as, as a combined. So you figured the five years. One no, one's not it on my record. Oh. It's only the three. Oh. Well, okay, so the one that you got five years ago is not on your record, but the one that you got three years nope. ago is. Yes, sir. It was a chemical failure. Oh, I did not hurt anyone. I did not get in an accident with anyone. I just was out with my mother, actually. <laughs> well, well even, with, uh, even with three years, they still not giving you the opportunity. I thought some companies would... I thought some companies only go as far, you know, I know some go as far as five years, but there are some companies out here that go as three years too. Let me ask you this, Nicole. Um, how, out of all the schools that you, that you tried, have you tried, uh, uh, any 
out of state schools or anything like that? Uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Massachusetts, and I believe Tennessee. <laughs> wow. And, and every last one of them shot you down. Who makes my coffee? Who makes my coffee? Will someone explain to me why I'm the worst day of my life? My coffee tastes like shit. Your coffee is normally made by Cato. Who the hell is that? Uh, yeah, and then I'm running into what everybody else is running to on the other side. Uh, I've had surgeries in the past. I've used CBD. I can't pass a hair test. So I can knock Swift. I can knock CRST. I can knock uh, Variant. I can, well, they don't even have a school. I could knock a lot of companies that are running hair tests right now that people are getting really caught up on. I don't know if you came across the, the numbers that I put up. That, that stamp, I'm going to bring that up a million times over because that's mm -hmm. what's really... That's what's really important, pulling numbers right now. So let me ask you this. Uh, did you know, well, of course, did you know previously beforehand that you knew that you wasn't going to be able to pass the uh, hair test or did you just uh, went in and, and took the hair test and then you find oh, out no, you could I, I, I won't. I won't go take one. I won't okay. go take okay, one okay, because, because you know. I've used CBD for right. the surgeries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I know myself, I know that I got myself clean and straightened up back in 2020 when my father passed, you know, but a school isn't going to know that because I have long hair. Ooh. I don't want to end up on a SAP program, you know. I understand a lot. And see, this was a lot of drivers that's coming into the industry fail to understand that, you know, that if they don't, you know, coming in from the school or coming in for the job. You know, you you fell that uh the the urine part of it, yeah. You you you're gonna be in the FMCSA now. So far, the hair follicle test is not FMCSA yet. DOT, yeah, correct. Yet, but of course, you got companies like Swift, CRST, Knight, uh, Snyder. And the rest of them companies pushing for hair follicle testing because they feel that, you know, all the drivers that comes in and, you know, of course, they fail the hair follicle test. They can't put it on the FMCSA because it's not FMCSA is regulated. But you figure about I think they said the number was like 20, 20,000, 50,000 drivers that has flunked the hair test so far, but still able to get in through the urine test, you know, maybe on a, you know, maybe on a smaller company. And speaking of smaller companies, uh, have you, have you tried a, a, a smaller school? I mean, there's, there are small schools out there that, that will take you, I'm not sure. No. I did, yes. Oh, okay. I, I did. And it, again, falls under that blanketed insurance rate, you know, and just having to wait out that time. Uh, but I do want to jump back on something you had said about the, the hair test not being reported to Clearinghouse. When I first started recruiting back in December of last year, I had multiple drivers that were on Clearinghouse because companies did not know yet not to report hair test to clearing house. Uh-oh. Companies don't have the info yet. Uh-oh. So Now they're starting to. Oh, so wait. So, Nicole, are yeah, you saying there that... there are drivers. So, you, are you saying that the, some companies out there sneak putting their hair follicle test through the FMCSA? Not necessarily, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that before everybody oh, okay. realized that it was not DOT regulated, some companies were reporting it to Clearinghouse oh, oh, they as was, a failure. Oh, okay. They was reporting it before they realized that it's not regulated. Gotcha. Right. Ooh, and wait, they kind of got so they was, I've, Oh, so they was, so instead of saying that the urine 
was bad before they found out it was regulated. They it was, was saying, a collective drug test. Oh, my God. Mm, okay. I know that there are people that are not, that do not have a CDL, that only have a personal license, that are on SAP, don't even have a permit. I know of drivers that are on SAP four times over quadruple. I know for because of CBD. <laughs> you think you learned, but I know, and I know these. I've known these people personally for like a long time. You know, to to be able to to really sit down and say, I think the hardest time ever was when I had a veteran call me when I first started recruiting. That was in his late seventies. And when I talked to him at almost 7.30 at night, I said, recruiter, and this man broke down on the phone and started calling me ma'am and begging me not to hang up because he smoked a joint in a legal state when he retired a year before for me to have to tell him he even had a program to go through and that he couldn't go back to work. I mean, it's bad out there. Uh, I, I had a woman that had breast cancer. Her hair grew back when she was in a legal state when she utilized THC for pain from her doctor. She couldn't go to any company that had a hair test. Mm. You and know? It's, 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 it's kind of funny that, you know, these companies out here, you know, rushing to the media over here talking about, you know, how much of a driver shortage it is and, how much and, and how no bad that they, and how bad that they need drivers but you got honest drivers out here that's literally changing their lives so they can come in and rock out in this industry only to be sidetracked because of uh because they smoked their joint back in the day for medical reasons i mean i would think that you know hey here's my doctor's excuse or my doctor's uh, prescribe, you know, medicine, you know, uh, cannabis medicine. Uh, I had, I talked to a driver that worked it in the cannabis yeah. plant and, and, and flunked the hair test. They never smoked. They never, you know, they never smoked in their, you know, in their life. They just worked around the cannabis plants and, you know, the cannabis you know, kind of like got into their hair or whatever the case, and they flunked it. They they flunked the hair follicle test, and she was trying to explain to them that hey, I never smoke. I work in the cannabis. This is my excuse or this the reason. And and yeah, you still have to go through the FMCSA SAP program. That's crazy. Now the SAP program it, it goes even worse because you can take never even a Tylenol in your life and be on the SAP program. Uh, if you're an older gentleman and can't produce a sample in time, you're on SAP. That's considered a refusal. If your company jumps the gun and you call to inquire about a position and they go ahead and schedule a drug test and you're unaware or don't make it in time, you're on the SAP program. If you're in class B license. Oh, wait, 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 uh, Nicole. Let me, wait, wait, let me, let me correct you on that part. Um, Yes, if you're, uh, if you go to the, the uh, damn it, you, if you go to the place and you sign in and you don't do it, yes, that, that is considered a refusal. But if you go there and you don't sign in, then no, that, that's not considered a refusal. Uh, I, I, I watched it happen. Oh, you watched it happen. Well, it, you know, yeah. I, I talked to a lady that works closely with the SAP program. And that's, you know, that's the information that I got from her. But you watched no, it happen. No, I absolutely want to look into it. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, you watched I, I, it happen. What happened? What happened? Uh, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, when I was recruiting, uh, there was this girl that called me. Um, I, even when I wasn't recruiting for any specific companies. Uh, I was still answering my phone. I put my personal line out there because there's nobody to help give information for SAP. Mm -hmm. um, I disclose every time. If I don't know the answer, I will call it. I will look it up. I will do the research, but I, I don't know. You know, I don't charge. Uh, I just help. Uh, but there was this uh, company that somebody was going to in Illinois and the girl was in Maryland. 
uh, she called the company up and he scheduled her a drug test just when she was inquiring about the position for the next day. Mm. She was in Maryland. So if she didn't show up to that drug test, she would have been considered refusing it. And I, but I watched it. Yeah. Firsthand at, uh, wow. at, a, at a company. And that's the furthest I'll go with that. Just because I, I that's, that's uh, just crazy. The company. Like, I mean, Ooh, that's mm -mm. not nah, uh, drivers. Y'all gotta be careful. Y'all definitely got to be careful uh, when when y'all talk to recruiters and getting things set up, because from what I from what you saying that they can they can set you up for an appointment, and if you don't go there, that 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 that's an automatic refusal. That's that's a far cry from what you know from what I understand. Because like I said, I worked with a young lady from Life on the Road recruiting. And she worked very mm -hmm. closely with, you know, FMCSAs, uh, you know, clearinghouse and SAP programs. So, yeah, that's why I said that, you know, if you go to your drug test and you sign in, you sign in to that drug test and your name is, you know, on the on the sign in and you just happen to leave, you know, let's say you get a another opportunity or something like that and you leave and they go to call your name and you're not there then yeah you that's an automatic refusal but i if, think the misunderstanding might be coming in under if it's an electronic sent in drug test or if a driver was just sent with a chain of custody and the clinic mm, is not expecting them mm, that okay. might be where the line is that because if a company uses a comp uh, like a like MedStop for instance, which mm -hmm. is a, a system that you could go ahead and send in that drug test, then they're going to already be expecting the driver in a certain time frame. Mm. So I had a gentleman that whose daughter went to the emergency room. That was uh, three, I think. Uh, he chose to go to the emergency room over the clinic. Ended mm -hmm. up on SAP, mm. uh, able to pass a hair test, but not allowed to go to a company within 120 days until they are past the date of their SAP. So they don't fail a hair test. <laughs> wow. Even though the guy was clean. So there's the other catch on it. It's it's kind of messy out there, but it's not just about staff. It's about everything in general. Exactly. Um, just lack of information. You know, it goes all the way down to people not getting out and helping, giving tips on backing and beta words anymore. <laughs> Man, Nicole. So about, uh, back to you. Um, it sounds like you... <laughs> It's, it sounds like you knocking on doors, but no nobody's opening them. You're you're up in Michigan right now, and now you got to find you know now you got to get your way back you know back to Indiana. Uh, is this putting a discouragement on you thus far? I um, oh yeah, I'm burnt. I started in Indiana in January. Uh, went to Massachusetts about six times, uh, ended up with <laughs> emergency hand surgery, all sorts of odd things in the process. Um, oh, have hit. I have seen a lot of things weirdly not being a driver, you know, um, but being in a truck, it's like I'm on a weird, bad home time from what I hear people describe of it. But now I'm in Michigan after going back to Indiana. Um, soon back to, to Indiana. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm losing track. Uh, I went homeless in the process. Um, most drivers are as well. My best friend is my, I've got multiple friends actually. I'm, I'm fighting for somebody in Florida right now that got slapped with a careless cause he got in a car accident during Uber at an airport. He's 68 and he's been driving most of his entire life. He was in the military. I mean, you know, and he can't find a job, uh, but somebody's got to do it. Um, I don't ask for help. I just destroyed my last career with this, my last company. I recruited for one of the best companies in the country, and I just lost my job to them because I've been so burnt because I get into this so personal, but I, I guess I just care. What, the, the last company that you was with what what actually happened if you if you care to share put that coffee down 
Um, you hear the stories. I guess I'm just not the normal recruiter. I, I, I like I said, I, 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 I get personal with it. Some days I can shut it off, but to me, that's still, it's not a piece of paper or an application. It's a person in their family on the other end of the phone. You know, I want to know uh, if you're wanting a 1099 or W2, or if you've got a vacation come, I want to know, you know, um, I was, I was grateful to be with a company that gave me the time to work with people and take all the time that I needed. But, um, I guess kind of going off on my side sabbatical of trying to get this information out there and trying to do whatever the hell it is I'm trying to do. Um, I was nervous because the first company I was with, I've only been with two, uh, screwed me over pretty bad. I'm not everybody in this industry is great. We all know that. Uh, I, and I was afraid every day I was going to lose my job, <laughs> even though I wasn't gonna. And, uh, I was flipping through indeed the other day. Uh, I came across something that reminded me of my job and went ahead and put an application in for it. And it ended up being for a carrier that used similar programs. So thought I was trying to switch ships, uh, looked bad. Uh, I was just looking for more ways to put info out there. But when I got asked about it, I didn't have an answer to give them. It just sounded stupid. I, you know, um, my, I think my heart lies kind of in the safety side regardless, but recruiting was the only way that I could actually, but I didn't feel like I was putting people in good companies anymore. Mm. I don't know who the good companies are. You know, companies. I do directly recruit for one company now, but mm. that's all. Companies. You know, companies now, you know, the recruiters, the recruiters now, you know, of course, they, you know, they're young, you know, they're inexperienced. And basically what they do is read from a book. You know, they they read, you know, they have a little pathlet in front of them. And, you know, it's like, what if the it's driver, <laughs> yeah, what, what if the driver asks you this type of question? you'll be able to look on the pamphlet and be able to, you know, give a box answer, you know, like, you know, the main, you know, the main questions that, you know, like inexperienced drivers come in to ask, uh, you know, home time, how much they get paid, what type of equipment, you know, those type of questions, you know, which is box questions, you know, they don't get a little bit in deep with the company. Like, how long the company been in existence? What type of freight you all? Um, you know, how how many drivers to a to a driver manager? Uh, how much right. is detention pay? What's what's my layover? And I'm going to be sitting. You know, a lot of times recruiters don't have the answers to that. You know, believe me, I I talk to a whole bunch of them. You know that you know that's why they call. You know that's why drivers call you know call to me and say hey lockout you know i got this company that i'm interested in can you give them a call to see what they're about because they I know do this thing for people <laughs> yeah they they know that i'll break you know i'll i'll break it down and try to get as much information as i can some of them are some of them are open with the information some of them are not you know but it is, it is what it is, man. I mean, you know, for the driver, you know, it's, it's all about the driver. If you want to come in and give that company about three months, six months, you know, it's, it's basically up to, to the driver to figure out if that company is right for him. No, I agree with you completely. And even if we have a piece of paper in front of us with layover breakdown, you know, every type of pay possible, you still may not even know what it is, you know. Exactly. All right, Nicole. Well, it, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, it's just, uh, I agree with you. <laughs> All right, Nicole. Well, I'm just glad to know there's somebody else that helps out. <laughs> oh yes, I, I've been doing I, I've been doing it for the last five years. I got I got archives and archives of companies that I have called over the years and still call to this to this very day. So, 
So yeah, but notebooks. You got boxes of notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, that's what I take with me when I travel. Just notes of notebooks. <laughs> well, Nicole, don't don't give up hope. Um, you know, I mean, you you're striving for your CDL. I mean, I understand the roadblocks that 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 you're hitting. You know, but eventually, you know, eventually one of them one of them doors is going to open up for you. You know, one one of them doors is going to open up for you. And when that door opens up, Nicole, I hope you come back and uh, chop it up with me again and let me know what that uh, let me know what that open door is. Well, it actually looks like I may be swapping sides to learning dispatching here when I get right back to Indiana. So maybe okay. I can give you a shoe in on that one soon. That's what's up. That's what's up. Guys, you know the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Men podcast show. If you want to get on and chop it up with me, you know what to do. 216 and reach out and we can get it in. Thanks Thank for having me. You're very welcome, Nicole. Thank you for coming on the show. And until next time, everybody, y'all take it easy and we'll come back to you with another one. Peace. Big G's got it locked. Boy.